because we play we fail to plan please for this rapid bus transport will sort out a lot of mess and roads uh, and i've heard you clearly say that uh, you are going to scrap the annuity program i can assure you in matungulu there is an annuity program running from tala to all donya sabuk the contractor is on site i don't know what to tell the people if you scrap it what will happen to that contractor who has a contract with the kenya government with the road stall are we going to get into penalties are we going to get into uh, legal tasso and the common man continues suffering because you have scrapped the program i want you to give us a very clear uh, negotiating plan on some of these issues uh, as caleb said let's not have speeches proper planning and if you want to succeed plan well junet thank you chairman yeah i should declare it's true that the nominee was my teacher one time the chairman But that's beside the point now <laughs> he was my teacher yeah so chairman i wanted to ask the nominee who is also my friend also to declare that but uh, there is transport on the road there is transport in the ocean and then there is transport in the air but there is one of one form of transport i want to remind you that might not be you are aware of it but you might not be knowing it very well it's called lake transport it's a huge transportation in the lake going to uganda going to tanzania it's a big transport there what is your plan on the lake transport system mr nomini and very quickly answer those more comments yeah, you chair. can see is saying time up yeah but mr S mr chair if you allow me five minutes first i yeah? allow you I, to uh, before i answer your questions five minutes on two things one i did not complete the issue of the airport and it will be very unfortunate to live here without telling you what's happening at k the airport in the jkia currently receives 7.5 million passengers a year compared to regionally uh, ethiopia is now receiving 15 a million that one was 7.5 15 million uh, rwanda is 2.5 rwanda is doing an expansion and quickly in an year or two they may move to 10 million ethiopia is planning to get to 100 million passengers at the airport in by 2024 meanwhile we have tens at jkia the speaker as a terminal when you land jkia and you're saying is we are transport hub you land there you find <laughs> you are your process through a tent mr speaker uh, if i am approved number one i will relook at the issue of greenfield terminal that was cancelled in uh, year 2016 already the contractor had been paid two point uh, about four billion shillings and because of the cancellation the contractor has gone to court there is a case at the international chamber of commerce in paris um the speaker with an exposure of 17 billion to ka i will uh, use my uh, knowledge as a lawyer and a negotiator for that purpose but also resources that are in our country to take this case out of court ne renegotiate uh, the the contract itself and possibly through ppp we build the greenfield uh, terminal At that time it was 56 billion it might be more but because uh, uh, airports generate revenue we should be able to get good investors who are coming to build that terminal number two the speaker we cannot continue the same way we have only one runway if we want to be a serious regional hub we must also explore ways of constructing the other planned uh, second runway which was part of the vision 2030 uh, plans number two mr speaker since nobody asked this question i really feel like i should be able to say this road carnage mr speaker and the role of ntsa which is in my ministry uh, should i be uh, approved mr speaker there are certain uh, plans that are on the way that i will make sure that they are implemented one is to ensure that the issue of uh, smart driving license is rolled out across the country uh, we will work with ntsa but possibly even with the private investors who are willing uh, 
through business to distribute the electronic uh, smart uh, driving license because the smart driving license has very important features that include identification of the party's insurance information, your PIN certificate. That becomes very useful when you deal with security and you heard my colleague uh, Senator uh, Kindiki speak to it yesterday. Number two, we will make sure that Mr. Speaker, car inspection, because part of the problem is inspection and somebody had raised it earlier. We have only 30 uh, inspection units in the entire country to inspect to offer 4 million vehicles, Mr. Speaker, annually. We will work with NTSA to privatize car inspection and to ensure that the private entities that are going to do the private uh, inspection will get a small fee, the rest of the resources come back to the NTSA. They will take responsibility, Mr. Speaker, for uh, uh, the work they do to make sure that we are able to inspect as many vehicles as, as, as uh, all the vehicles, Mr. Speaker, and all them accountable. And that information is loaded to your smart number plate, which, Mr. Speaker, now must also be rolled out to the entire country. We will also make sure that all the driving uh, schools, Mr. Speaker, uh, training schools are all registered, monitored, and supervised so that we make sure that uh, we train our drivers uh, very well. Mr. Speaker, on the use of technology on traffic, and particularly in the city here, already there is a pilot project that is being done by uh, Kura. Kenya Urban Roads Authority. And NTSA is working also on uh, transport integrated management system. I will tell you something very astonishing, Mr. Speaker, and shocking actually. In one of the cameras they installed in one of the corners, I'll not say where, in Nairobi, they established that per day the camera records 300 offenses. One camera, but it's in a roundabout, so there are four cameras. All the four cameras each record 300 offenses. And of the 300 offences, Mr. Speaker, uh, they are about uh, you, the fine goes up to three three thousand. If you calculate the amount of money raised from those four cameras, it comes to 1.2 billion, uh, Mr. Speaker, in a year. That's one roundabout. What we are going to do, and this is not something we are imagining, it's already being worked by Cora and NTSA is also working. We will bring them together. We will make sure that this technology is put across all the roads, urban, our urban roads to start with, and the highways. Then, Mr. Speaker, we will remove police from the road. It will be the smart technology we are using. The e-police the, the e -police will work, record all these offences, and instant fines are levied. Of course, we'll have to come back to Parliament here to pass the proper legislation and bring together all the agencies. If we do that, we are likely actually per year to raise not less than 50 billion in Nairobi alone from offences. Of course, people will now behave as, <laughs> as you progress. When you go to the highways, Mr. Speaker, if we manage actually to dwell the roads the way we are dwelling and then put the cameras there. We don't need a policeman on the, on the, on, in the highway. You just take, record the offences and you take responsibility. Your fines come to you. Your insurance will be expensive if you become a serial offender, like it does in all over the world. That is how we are going to reduce, um, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, road carnage, and we make Kenyans become more responsible. Now, the good thing with this technology, it doesn't know, this, he, he, this is the speaker, this is the minister, this is who, everybody will just be recorded. The idea of meeting a policeman and uh, rolling down your window and saying, oh, this is me, and they say, oh, Mushimu, I just go, will not be there, because everybody will be able to pay uh, for, for, for that. Mr. Speaker, there for let me now go to the uh, answers that uh, uh, questions that have been asked. I agree with Honorable Koech, the question of um, uh, capture of this sector. Uh, uh, Honorable Koech, the good thing is that I don't come from this sector per se. I am an outsider. So I'm not conflicted. I've never been a road contractor. I, I have never worked in the mostly on most of the sectors. So I tell them that when I arrive, uh, Mr. Speaker, there is a new sheriff in town if I'm approved and that we'll do things the right way. Number two, uh, you talked about local contractors and somebody else also raised that issue down here. Uh, we'll make sure that the policy that was put in place that all contracts below one billion shall go to local contractors is strictly implemented because we cannot continue growing foreign contractors and we punish our own contractors. And we will go up to the companies registry to lift the veil so that you don't become a foreigner register a local company and say I'm a local company. Yeah, we'll make sure that its company is owned by citizens. When, so that we achieve the, 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 the intention that all 
only companies that will get the below 1 billion will go to citizens. Let's put it that way, so that we can be able to grow our own citizens. The roads on Ebakalem, you are my neighbor. Uh, I am also, I live in your, in your county. And um, the, the point is that there is no opposition. If you know Murkomen well, uh, I work with everybody. The, and the government of Kenya promised by the president also is that we are not going to develop this country based on whom we know and where, the, 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 uh, uh, where someone comes from. Uh, if you want me to, soon after approval, to go with you to, your, to, the, to see this, uh, the roads, we will go there and then I will work on the plans. Of course, we don't want to make road light, road, roadside declarations of just standing there and saying, Barabara Kutoka up, up to there, we will construct. I will be coming there when we have information and plans on how we will be able to do those roads. And I invite not just you, Honda Baraso doesn't have roads inside this constituency, uh, many roads in the northeastern part of the country are marginalized, uh, not to mention also in many parts of the north, uh, uh, every part of the country actually has a place. Uh, Honda Baraso talks about, um, uh, uh, I know, Honda Bakaleb, I, I know you said you tried so hard to be part of government. But if you ask me, you were part of government for the last five years. Uh, so it doesn't help. Even being part of government does not help. <laughs> yeah? if, if the principle is marginalization, it is just marginalization. So we must make sure that we do that. Uh, Under Boraso, I am very much aware, uh, I, anyone who is a scholar on areas of uh, devolution must always start from sessional paper number 10 of 1965. And I know the marginalization that came in. That's why Lapset and other projects were put in place to remove this idea of, of establishing other areas as low, 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 low potential, low potential areas. Uh, public participation, we will ensure that in the final implementation we do that and we work with you, and I agree with you entirely. Even in the, a few briefs I've seen, is that you find in one corner a road per kilometer is 80 million, in another place 40, 40 million. We must have standard roads that can be uh, counted. Honorable uh, Shuria, yes, I agree, the road is ongoing, and we want to have the conversation with the contractor first, so that we have a, a plan of Lamu to Isiolo. Uh, I, it's my hope that it is stomached, not just Mara, so that it can attract the investments that we want to have. Uh, continuous maintenance is the same issue that you've said. We must be able to do that, and we must ring fence the resources for